What's up, fuckers? This is gonna be a serious video. It's gonna get all deep and emotional and shit like that. Uh, so if you don't like it, don't complain to me. Uh, go ahead and complain to your girl. And then she'll tell me all about your complaints next time I see her and totally fuck her. So I've been unemployed for, you know, like eight months total now. And I've done a lot of thinking. I've had nothing to do besides think about myself and jerk my dick. Uh, so, you know, I've gotten a lot of wisdom over this time. And I've kind of, you know, learned a lot about myself. And, you know, kind of understand the process and how that works. So I'm just going to, you know, share my experiences. And maybe hopefully translate a lot of what I learned to y'all. So y'all don't have to go through this shit that I did. Maybe just expedite that process. There's a lot of personality tests out there. I like the Myers-Briggs personality test. It's probably the most famous and well-known personality test in the United States. It highlights four dimensions of personality, which I'll get into later. Something I also use are like cognitive functions of the Myers-Briggs. Uh, that's usually not listed and not available on most Myers-Briggs personality tests. You usually have to seek those out on different tests, but they do you know, get into the deeper specifics of you know how your personality operates and can offer a lot greater insight you know kind of allow you to capitalize on your strengths a lot better you know just a few warnings the shit ain't the gospel truth a lot of people will take results from this test and kind of abuse it like star signs you know like those tumblr girls that are like haha sorry i crashed my car i guess i'm a scorpio it's like no like you're just a fucking stupid bitch and you just learn how to drive it's the same thing you know your personality type isn't a fucking label uh, you know, know its limits. Again, it's not a mind reading device. Just hopefully you can get some actionable insights out of any tests like this that you can just apply to make positive changes to your life. And then again, everything is a scale. So like, for example, if you say you're an extroverted person, you're not 100% extrovert. You have introverted tendencies. You have introverted qualities. They just, your extroverted ones t tend to shine through more often and make a, you know, have a larger impact on your life. Yeah, so I just fucking talked about this one. Uh, everything on the Myers-Briggs test is represented with a letter. So extroversion is just represented by E. You gain energy from interacting with others. Introversion is represented by I. You kind of gain energy from being alone. You're more of an inward person. Not a lot to say about this. It's generally pretty self-explanatory. You know, most people understand it at face value. Right, then there's sensing versus, you know, intuiting or intuition. That's kind of a, this is a trickier one to understand. A sensing by an S is just a related to like your five senses. You're more focused on reality. You're pretty hands-on. You're more of a realist. Where intuition is represented by N. Uh, it's a lot more focused on patterns, impressions, you know, possibility. More of an idealist type personality. So then there's thinking versus feeling. Again, this one's pretty easy to understand at face value. If you're a thinker, if you're a T, uh, you know, you're motivated by logic, facts, data. You're basically a Republican or you're pretty much Ben Shapiro 2.0. If you're a feeler, an F, you know, you're motivated by emotions. You're focused on people. You know, you understand relationships. Uh, you're basically a stupid tree-hugging libtard who watches CNN. So judging versus perceiving. This one is like the most vague, but also kind of like the widest one for maybe how you understand the world. Judging is... Um, you know, really based on like decision making. You're also, also very firm and very structured, kind of like order. Perceiving is really literally based on like your perception of the world, like your interpretation of the world. Uh, you're also pretty, if you're more of a perceiving person, you tend to be pretty flexible. You tend to be pretty open. You're not really as bothered maybe by a lack of order. Uh, you, you tend to be a little more go with the flow, freestyle type person. Alright, so then what happens then is you fucking take this test, which I'll have a link in the description later, but then a combination of your four letters equals your type. For example, I'm an INTJ, which means I tend to be, you know, introverted, intuitive, thinking, you know, and then judging. Um, but I mean, again, everything's a scale, so you can have similarities and traits of other types. When you get your type, you know, you'll read the, you'll read the write up of it. And there'll probably be a lot of good insights into, you know, who you are and your personality. But then you might read some other ones and you might think, wow, that sounds like me too. But again, you know, your type isn't a label. You can identify with traits of other types. You have, if I'm an introvert, I still have extroverted qualities. It's just, you know, in general, the INTJ type and that write-up is going to have a lot of, you know, insights that apply to my life. And a lot of, you know, maybe good advice for, you know, how to move forward and how to be productive and how to be a better human being. This is where it gets a little complicated, so if you don't give a shit and you're bored and I know we're already at like the five minute mark, just go ahead and stop the video now because taking the test up to that point is probably good enough. 
However, you know, understanding my cognitive functions is really what took it over the top for me because I've taken that test a thousand fucking times and I've been an INTJ a thousand fucking times. But then when I really started to understand the different cognitive functions is when it really like started to click for me. I'm like, okay, I really, really have a much better understanding of myself. So again, all those elements, they're categorized more specifically into what's called cognitive functions. Sensing, sensing and intuiting are perceiving elements and those dictate how you understand the world. Thinking and feeling are judging elements and they kind of dictate how you interact with the world. I know that doesn't really make sense right now, but bear with me. So all four of those elements, the sensing, intuitive, and thinking, feeling, are then categorized as either extroverted or introverted. An example of that is you know, extroverted feeling. So that gives us a total of eight cognitive functions. All right, I'd like to go through the eight cognitive functions real quick just to kind of give everyone watching just an initial understanding because if you haven't taken the test and you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably really confused. Uh, so again, there's those four elements I talked about, then they're introvert, extroverted and introverted. So to start with extroverted sensing, you tend to have your strong five senses. Um, you know, you're really good with details and memory, you're hands-on, you're very tactile. Um, then there's introverted sensing. You're in tune with yourself, uh, like your, you know, typically your emotions and your physical feelings like hunger and shit like that. You like tradition and routine and you value your experiences and your memories a lot. Moving on to intuition, extroverted intuitors, they're brainstormers, they notice patterns, they're really full of ideas. Uh, introverted intuition, uh, this one's hard to explain. Um, it's also my prime, it's also my strongest cognitive function as an INTJ. Again, thinking without thinking, knowing without knowing in a eureka moment. Um, again, it's really hard to explain. It's really just kind of, if you know, you know. Uh, it would take a long time to explain it, so I'm not even gonna bother. If you actually care to learn about it, I suggest just Googling it, but it would take me forever to try to explain it. Uh, moving out of thinking, there's extroverted thinking. Uh, you know, logic, reason, analysis, order, kind of argumentative. Those types of people kind of like to take their thoughts and project them, you know, onto the world. Um, <clears throat> uh, project them on other people and tend to be a little bit more practical with their thinking. Or they're introverted thinkers, you know, they're thoughtful, rational, systematic, theoretical. Uh, these tend to be like more philosopher types or scientist types. Again, they tend to be not so much extroverted thinkers tend to be a bit more practical or introverted thinkers tend to be a bit more theoretical. Uh, lastly, feeling, extroverted feeling, you know, people that are really concerned with others, uh, you know, they strive for harmony, they're pretty empathetic, and they also tend to be pretty social. This is like, like, like a, if you think of a classic extrovert, they're probably, you know, you're thinking of an extroverted feeling person. Uh, then there's introverted feeling, uh, you know, this, they're generally pretty individualistic. Uh, they generally have strong values, or at least, uh, you know, are very vocal about their values. And they're also generally pretty confident with themselves. So again, those cognitive functions aren't exclusive to anyone, you know, each personality, every person, they sense, intuit, think and feel, you know, both extroverted and introverted. Uh, so the differences come down to how each type, you know, tend to interact with themselves and others and how they tend to utilize those cognitive functions. You know, each, again, everyone has and uses all eight, but the differences are each personality type, you know, has those eight ranked in a different order. So again, that's a lot more specific than just being assigned the letters. And if you just take the regular test, you're just assigned the four letters. If you come to understand these cognitive functions, you can then have, instead of the four letters, you have eight functions ranked in order. So I find a lot more value from this. So if and when you actually decide to take this fucking test, you, know, you will get your top, you'll get your eight functions ranked. However, only the top four really matter. And also the top four, you're going to have two extroverted and two introverted. Your top function is very important. It's the most important. You know, it's heavily theorized that your top function is the only function really present in your mind up to the point you're about 13 years old. Um, and they kind of give, there are explanations available for, you know, how each, how these all present in children. So you can kind of maybe read about your top function, how that presents in children, and then kind of compare and contrast that with your behavior as a child, you know, maybe realize how significant that this actually is and how much of a role it plays in your life. Your second function is also pretty important. It's a really strong complement to your top function. And these, your top two functions dictate 
you know, some estimates dictate roughly about 90% of your personality and, you know, kind of how you interact with your, the world and yourself. Uh, the second function, they say, is developed and also present, you know, until about age of 21. And then after the age of 21 is when your, when your third and fourth functions really start to come into play. Um, but again, you know, your, your first and your second function are definitely the most important. So again, I did leave a link in the description for you guys. I've taken about a thousand Myers-Briggs tests. I've gotten INTJ about a thousand times. I've never gotten my cognitive functions ranked like I have in this test. There's a lot of information present in this test that I never saw in any other test. The formatting in this test is a lot better. Just overall, you know, my favorite test by far. I think there's a lot of value in this test. You know, and I hope that everyone else who watches this and takes this test gets just as much value and just as much meaning as I did out of it. And hopefully, you know, your life improves just as much as mine did. Um, this is supposed to be funny, though. So, uh, fart, 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 poop, poop, fart, fart, fortnight, balls. That's all I got.